Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek Hub and I'm Penge and welcome back to Fabledom. Now we did play the demo of this a little while back and it was really really good, we had a lovely time with it, so here we are back with the early access version which contains a lot more exciting bits and bobs including the option to romance of the rulers which does sound all very wonderful indeed because that didn't really feature properly in the demo. The demo kind of teased us with that idea but it didn't kind of deliver on that idea, it went oh can you go and romance another ruler? Can you do it? No you can't because the demo's over, you'll have to wait for early access. So here we are in early access, we can now see how that side of the game works. If you didn't see the demo at all, then this is a fairy tale city builder. So it's about regular city builder things like building homes and growing food and such like, but also there are fairy tale elements as well. So expect things like flying pigs and talking trees and gingerbread houses and happily ever afters and all that kind of fairy tale stuff. So the early access version is due to be released on Steam on the 13th of April, so only a few days away as this video goes out. And as always, if you're interested, there is a link to the Steam Store page in the video description so you can check it out if you'd like to. But anyway, let's get on with it, shall we? We've got a fairy tale city to build. Okay, so first up, we have to pick a realm where we'd like to go and build our wonderful fairy tale city. And I've generated this entire map off of the map seed Lovely Cup of Tea. So effectively, what we're looking at here is Lovely Cup of Tea World, which does sound like a very good place to go and live. Can I move in please? Because it sounds amazing. So let's go and pick a realm at random. How about, I don't know, that one there in the middle, the realm of Kodor or Kodawa, possibly, not quite sure. We can and will change the name of the realm that we eventually pick. So this realm here is medium in size. It's got access to a medium amount of ocean. It's only got a few hills which might be a little bit of a bother if we're trying to collect stone and metal and coal or whatever. But there's quite a lot of forest because there are many, many trees around. Okay, right, so we're going to be good for gathering wood, but maybe we might struggle possibly gathering stone and other things like that. I'd like it maybe if we could find a place that's got a few more hills dotted around. That could be quite useful. How about Janin over there? Janin is exactly the same as Kodawa there. Okay, that was no use at all. How about across the lake over here in Dre Banor? How is Dre Banor looking? That's much better. I prefer that. So a medium amount of hills. So we should have a decent amount of stone and metal and whatever else comes out of a hill. Uh, we've not got quite as many trees, but that's okay. Still a normal amount. That's plenty of trees. That's okay for us, I think. So let's settle over here. I quite like the look of that. And again, you know, medium realm size, medium ocean. It's all good. So I like that. Good place as well. Next to a nice lake and the sea. It's lovely. So who are we going to play as? We're going to play as... A princess. Let's play as a princess looking for a princess because why not? And we all know what name we're going to be. We all know who we're going to play as. We're going to play as Princess Betty. Of course we are. It had to be Betty. Who else could it possibly be? There we go. We're going to play as Betty and now we need to pick a kingdom name. Okay, so I mean Dre Banor is very lovely, but no, we can change that. So let's maybe pick a different one. I think we'll call it Cupboard Vale. I think that sounds quite good. We've had Geek Vale before when we played Father's Frontier, so we'll just switch it around a bit and go for Cupboard Vale. That works quite well. So there we go, Cupboard Vale it is, and we're going to play as Princess Betty of Cupboard Vale. So I think with that done, we are ready to go. Chapter 1, A New Beginning. Once upon a time, there was a space bar, but was it pause? Yes, I can very happily confirm that it was and still is pause. Well done, game. Good job. Right, here we go. I think let's go meet the people who will found the wonderful city of Cupboard Vale. We've got four Fablings down here. Let's go and say hello, shall we? So who do we have? We've got Matilda Ward. We've got Beatrice Bonetti, which is a wonderful name. We've got Agnes Garcia and we've got Joan Martinez. So our four Fablings are there standing around the cart of all the things they have in the world because that's it. That's all we've got. We've got that cart and some boxes of stuff and they've got the clothes on their backs and that's kind of it. We've got nothing else, but we do have a lovely big area to build in and it looks very nice. Plenty of trees. There's some stone over there, I notice. We're not too far away from the sea or a lake or whatever it is. So that's quite handy as well. Maybe do some fishing. So it looks pretty good. Our starting location seems to be quite good. Let's go and have a little nosy around the map, shall we? What else do we have? Looks like I've got a ruin over there of some kind. There's some stone over there. There's another ruin there. So we've got some ruins there and some ruins there. That's quite good. Can we go and find the talking tree? There was a tree in the demo and we didn't get over to talk to the tree, but it'd be lovely if we could go and have a chat with the tree. Not quite sure where the tree is. There, there's the tree. 
because the tree is bigger than the other ones. Bob Barkskin. There we go. There's Bob. The tree is called Bob, which is brilliant. Hello, Bob the tree. How are you? We'll try to make our way over here and have a chat with Bob, because Bob surely has some part to play in this. Whether he gives us a quest or a mission or something, I do not know. But there you go. There's Bob over there. Bob the talking tree. We're not that far away. I think if we expand out to here, and then maybe that way, that will get us in contact with Bob. That's quite exciting. Okay, that's very good. Got some more sort of uh, water over here. There's plenty of room to build on. We've got, are they the flying pigs? Are they the flying pigs? There's some flying pigs down here. There they are, look, little pigs with little wings. Very nice. More stone over there. Plenty of trees going on. Can't see too many hills. Given that we're supposed to have a sort of a medium amount of hills, can't really see too many of those. But there we go, never mind. Oh, look, there's some of that weird, whatever that was, like pink magic goo type stuff that again in the demo we didn't really get round to interacting with but that could be quite exciting we could try and work out what that allows us to do this time round because yeah there's a little pool of it over there there might be some somewhere else as well i do not know what's that what are they uh, oh sheep there's some sheep over there as well that's exciting okay so it looks good it's a lovely map it's very pretty oh it's a bit of a hill over there possibly okay a tiny bit of a hill right where are we we're over here okay so we do have a little kind of list of objectives slash tutorial things down here and look at that wouldn't you know it we've moved the camera about a bit yay for us right so claim 10 money thank you very much where were we ah yes our kingdom began with little more than a humble laborer's hut now where did that go again hmm Okay, so now we've got to get building, and we start with a little labourer's hut. Okay, so build a bit of road, get a labourer hut, and then assign somebody to become a labourer in that hut. Okay, nice and simple. I think what we'll do is, like we did before, I think, we should have a great big road just sort of coming right through the middle, like a kind of a highway type thing, and we can build off that big road. I quite like that idea. So if we get gravel road coming along, I mean, can it go right past the right past the kind of storage wagon thing. That'd be quite handy. If we could just build all the way along there like that, that's going to cost 38 money, apparently. Do we have 38 money? I'm not entirely sure. We'll see if we have 38 money when I press that button there. Apparently we do. Apparently we do have 38 money. So there we go. A lovely kind of your know, main road through our settlement. The storage wagon is on that main road so people can get stuff out and get it on the road nice and quick. And now let's put our labourers hurt. I mean, where do we put that? Let's maybe put that over here somewhere. We'll pop that just there. I think the blue the blue kind of bit there is showing where people get in and out. So if we put that just there, we now have a labourer hut. It's kind of magically appeared. It's not overly advanced. And now we assign a labourer to it. Okay, so assign a worker. Who's gone to work in there? Matilda Ward. So Matilda is now our first labourer. Okay, we'll claim some money for that. Thank you very much. And now we need to build some houses. Okay, that makes sense. So build a homestead, build two homestead attachments inside the new garden. I do like that about this game. You get to build little things in the gardens. I'm going to sign a head of household. I think as well, at some point, we are going to have to build a well. And a well has to kind of go in the middle of the houses to make it effective. And as well, there was something, was it like a tavern or something? I'm trying to recall the demo. There was like a building you put in the middle of the other ones and it has an area of effect. So I think maybe we could do with building with a little bit of a gap somewhere in the middle. Um, okay, how can we do this? How can we best work this out? I think, what if, what if we have, say, some houses, we could have a road going along there, just to get around the edge of the map that we have for now. Maybe we could have some houses. How big are the houses? Remind me how big they have to be. Are there any one... They're only one square in size themselves, but their gardens, I think their gardens are two by three. I think the entire sort of plot takes up a two by three space. So I think what we could do is we could have, if we want to have, there's going to be a well somewhere. I can't quite recall exactly what we do with the well, but the well has to go in the middle between a lot of houses to make it work properly. So maybe if we have, hang on, rotate that around. If there's a road going along the back, we could have, say, a house just there. And then, okay, hang on. Can we place it? Yeah, edit mode. Okay, so how big does the plot need to be? So that's, yeah, that's the little garden bit. Um, I think, okay, yeah, so it can be, that looks about right. Yeah, so it's got to be five extra squares for a full-size garden. Yeah, we'll have that, please. Um, ah, okay, they've put down the thing. There is a way to turn that off. So in this garden, 
they've got themselves a washing line so they can hang their clothes out and get them nice and dry and a chicken coop so they can lay you know, them they don't lay eggs the chicken lay eggs they've got you know extra food going on they're providing themselves that's quite good um how do we turn off the random placement of that there is a thing which you can press oh there it is it's that button there okay so we'll stick with that for now that's fine so build if we build that house there and then we can have a road going up here and another house here facing it that would work quite well in the middle we could just put a well somewhere we could have a well say just here and that would cover a number of houses that might work that might possibly work okay hang on a second hang on so build that okay that's good and then we can have a kind of a path going up the middle say let's do it to there for now and can we get another house can we get another house in uh where's that one that one is there so we'll put it kind of opposite that can go out like that and then we get to pick the things that we put in their garden i do like this so what do we have a clothing line makes the building more desirable a dog house it says who's a good boy on there um that's plus three desirability the outhouse okay so an outside toilet tired of going in a bucket try this impressive innovation in waste disposal <laughs> Yeah, they've moved the bucket from the inside into the outside of a house. Who would have thought it? So that's also making the house more desirable. And then a small greenhouse adds homegrown food. The beehive. Bees. We got some bees. Uh, the beehive also adds food. The apple tree obviously adds food. And the chicken coop adds food. Okay. So what have they got again? They've got, uh, what was it? A washing line and a chicken coop wasn't it so let's give them a different thing and we've got to put bees in because bees are amazing everyone knows that bees are the best animal so let's put a beehive in for food and then maybe they can have a dog they can have animals over here that can be a house for animal lovers they can have a dog and they can have bees brilliant okay so build that please and then is it worth getting another house set up i think it might be worth getting a third house in so in this one, we'll have a lovely apple tree right there. And then we'll have an outhouse at the back just there. Okay, so three houses. I think that's pretty good. So, okay, right. Get time ticking on. Nice and quick. Uh, come out of that. Thank you very much. And um, how do I, I don't want to click on that anymore. Come out of the thing that I've just clicked on. There we go. Right, so we've got Matilda Ward is... I mean, Matilda's doing everything right now. Can Matilda have a bit of help? Are we allowed to assign another person? Because Matilda is you know, building fences and houses and putting down beehives and planting flowers over here. Can she have some help? Can we get another labourer? Yes, okay. Assign a worker. So uh, Matilda has been joined by Agnes. Okay, that's good. So that should make things a little bit quicker in terms of getting everything built. Um, hang on a minute. We have to assign a head of household. But I think they've automatically done that. So hang on a minute. I think is that the head? Beatrice Bonetti is the head of that household. So I think we have to remember the head of the household remains in that house. They stay in here. They keep it running. They bring the food in. They get the water in. So they don't count toward our kind of job total. So three people live in that house, but Beatrice remains in the house to look after it. So really, the house only provides two workers and one person who looks after the building itself. Okay. So oh, hang on. Claim some money. Thank you very much. Here we go. Prepare for newcomers. Build a well. Finish building two homesteads and welcome some new people. Righty ho. So let's get the well in. So where are we going to put the well? Uh, hang on a second. So the well. Oh, all the building options have appeared now. Crikey. Oh, the decorations are in. We could put the decorations in. Um, how about... That's going to be where the well is, isn't it? Okay. Basic well. So the basic well covers that area there. Yes, it makes sense kind of put it in the middle i think what if what if we put the basic well just there like that and then we extend that road to go all the way up there like that and then we get another house set up here like that that's not going to work hang on I've, I've done that a bit wrong hang on a minute they need a garden there we go and in this garden we can have a greenhouse at the end and we can have a washing line um maybe do you know, like that actually yeah like that so we've now got four houses so plenty of houses for people to move into get the well sorted and then yeah i mean we've got a bit of a waste of space over here unless we do put some decorative things over here what we could we could have a road coming that way actually put a road there and then we can get some decoratives in so we've got what three two squares for decoratives so how about 
we have, we could have a big tree. That might be quite nice. That's a slightly less big tree. Um, a public outhouse. Oh, that might be quite good. Let's pop a little public loo just there so people, yeah, if they need to go, they can go. And then possibly... Um, oh, those ones are locked away. No game. Give us all the things. Um, is it worth... Is it worth putting it behind... So putting the outhouse behind a tree for privacy's sake? Maybe it is. Let's put that just there. Okay, right. This could be quite good. So, okay, come out of the build mode. So now we've got... The well is going in. That house is almost done. Let's move time on. Right, there we go. The well is done. That tree has gone in nice and quick. Um, ah, finally, here come our first newcomers. As long as you keep your population happy, more will want to join. As long as there is room, of course. There's plenty of room. Got so much housing going on, we don't know what to do with it. Um, okay, so four out of 12. Welcome two people. Absolutely. Okay, so I've got two more people. Claim a bit of money back. Thank you very much. Might be possibly wasting it on, you know, things we don't need to be. But it's a lovely tree. And we're going to have a public loo as well. In case you haven't got a loo. There's chickens. There's actually chickens. Hello, chicken. Do not pick it up. Or is that another game? Okay. <laughs> you can pick the chickens up in Zelda, I think. Do you pick them up in Wind Waker and they get grumpy and they chase after your car? Recall. Um, okay. Couple of little adorable chickens. They look very good. Is there a dog? Hang on, is there a dog? Or are there bees? These are the important questions that we have to get answers to. It doesn't look like there's a dog or bees, but there are chickens. So, you know, we can't complain too much. And the chickens do look adorable. <laughs> oh, and they can walk through fences as well. Amazing. Um, okay, right, what are we supposed to be doing? Farms. Oh, yeah, food. Food's probably quite important, isn't it? Hang on a second. So where do we want to put our farm? I think... Um, I mean, over there it's got quite a lot of trees. So that might be good for our foresting operations. Possibly over here then. Oh, there is a big load of um, big load of stone just there that we might be able to go and get our hands on at a later point. Maybe, maybe we put the farm over there. So hang on a minute. So farming, how do we do this again? Farm, they gather resources from attached crops. Okay, so if we say put the farm, let's put it there. Or is that a bad idea, though? <laughs> I think that might be a bad idea. What if we put the farm next to the buildy place? That's okay. So pop the farm just there. Um, and then we've got to build... Here we go. I remember this. So we need, what, 25 field tiles, as it were. So how about then? So that's six. Um, okay, hang on. Have we got enough money to do that? So that's... that's What's that? Nine. That's 11. That's... 16, is it? 60 out of 40. Okay, so we need 25. So how about we just sort of build up the back of it more like that. That's 26 out of 40. Okay, so a little, a little farm. I think maybe we do another bit there as well. It might be expensive. It's 180 out of our 213 coins, but food is obviously very important. So yeah, okay, get that done. Crops will grow over time as long as at least one farmer is assigned to the farm. All crops die when winter arrives. So you can't grow stuff in the winter because, of course, it's a bit cold. So we're going to grow, uh, yeah, pumpkins. I don't know. I've already got that sorted out. Okay. And right, we need somebody to actually come along and build this. That would help if you could just you know, get some wood and do some building. That'd be marvellous. There are two of you who are assigned to do labouring work. Why are you not helping out, Agnes? Poor Matilda there, just going back and forth. You could have helped out. <laughs> or are you supervising? You're there in a more sort of supervisory capacity. Working at a comfortable pace, it says there. <laughs> You're not working at all. I mean, that is the most comfortable of all paces. Not doing anything at all. We made a bit of money. We made a bit of money. Wonderful stuff. And oh, now they're both working at a comfortable pace. And we have a wonderful farm. Okay. So let's get... Um, how many people have we got? So two of them are unemployed. So if we assign a worker just there and assign a worker just there. So who have we got? So Beatrice Lopez and Thomas Lopez. Okay. I think Thomas must have joined us. I don't think we had a Thomas before. So maybe they've joined us. I can't quite recall. But there we go. So a couple, uh, couple of Lopez family members working out on the farm. Out on the Lopez family farm. That's very good. Right. So move time. Oh, hang on. Claim that. Yeah, we do need to get some wood and possibly some more money as well. Would not go amiss. Build a lumber camp, assign a woodcutter. Okay, so we are going to have to 
either wait for more people to move in, which I think we can do. We've got plenty of housing available. Two entire empty houses. So we should be okay for housing space. But um, yeah, it'd be good if we could get another farmer. And then, yeah, if we do need to build a, um, a lumber camp, we might need to possibly drop one of the labourers to turn them into a lumber camp worker. Uh, okay, lumber camp. Let's put that over here then, because that makes perfect sense. There are many, many trees over there for them to go and lop down. So there we go. Put that in. Oh, and that had the um, the little forest a bit that we could add on, but we haven't got that right now. Okay, yeah, we need to unlock that by becoming a hamlet. Okay, right. So build that for now, and we will get a little road going up to it because that makes sense. Okay, so now I've got all that in. They can go and build that, but then once that's done... We need to stop one of you being a labourer, and you can then go and work over there. Oh, hang on, hang on. We've got a letter. This can't be right. It seems you got a letter from an admirer. Odd. Well, I suppose there's no accounting for taste. Hee <laughs> hee. You can open it by clicking the letter icon at the top centre of your screen. Okay, so, oh, hang on a minute. Pause time. <laughs> the letter's gone, but we can welcome some new people. Absolutely welcome newcomers. And now we can read our letter from Agnes. Oh, I remember you, Agnes. I remember you. Some lovely robins there. Dearest princess, and the same back to you. My sun and spring, such a splendid land this is. Undulating hills and wide fertile plains. It is a dream of our ancestors. I wish to make this land to a paradise, but I cannot do it on my own. Your dashing countenance is already the talk of this land. Shall we meet Agnes the Harvest Princess? Okay, my dashing countenance. My goodness me, you're making me blush, Agnes. Um, yeah, I'd love to. Can we meet? Let, let's meet up. Let's meet up. We've got a farm that we can meet at and we can you know, look out at the fertile soil there as it grows pumpkins. That'll be fun. Okay, we need to assign a woodcutter. So Agnes Garcia, you're no longer required to be a labourer and we'll put her to work over here in the lumber camp. Although we did just welcome some more people, didn't we? So hang on. We might potentially have, yeah, you've got one unemployed person. So, I mean, who was that? I know Agnes did go and work in the lumber camp, but yeah, we didn't have to do that. We didn't have to do that. So yeah, our people joined. One of them, so Tony Russo has become head of house over there in that household. But then, yeah, we welcomed Mabel Isolde. So we are getting some more people in. Eight out of 12 now, which is good. 63 happiness. That's not too bad at all. And then, yes, we are going to now top up a bit on wood. And we're hopefully going to grow some more vegetables when the time comes. It's looking good. It's looking good. You know, they're, they're getting them in. They are growing ever so slightly, but you know, they're getting there. So that's quite good. Uh, right, we'll claim the money for that. Thank you. Collect 200 money in taxes and place three decorations. Now you're talking, Gabe. Now you're talking. Um, how about we have... I think we did this in the demo, didn't we? There was... There's an arrow. There's a pointy... Yeah, there we go. Tall arrow sign. So if we just put one of these down over here, right on the edge of the uh, path there, as though it's saying, hey, look, look at that cupboard veil is this way. So let's put that down. Uh, there we go. Place it. Don't have to build it. Just place it. We'll claim the money for that. So the next goal is to yeah get 200 in taxes, which will just happen by virtue of time passing by, and reach the population milestone of Hamlet. How exactly do we become a Hamlet? Um, Ten people. Okay, so at the moment we've got eight. So we should, I think, if we just run time on, be able to get the money coming in from the taxes and also get closer to two more people joining. And it's raining. It does look very pretty in the rain. Look at that. It's splashing on the floor and it's making puddles. Puddles going in the grooves of where sort of your know, tracks would go. It's oh, Look at that. It's running off the roofs. It's kind of running off the roofs. And because they haven't got any kind of form of guttering going on, it's just pouring straight off and going down onto the floor. But there we go. I think that place just generated a bit of food for itself, which is very good. Okay. Okay. This is good as well for the water level, isn't it? It's good for topping the well back up and such. And watering the crops, that's got to be helpful as well. Just don't rain too much. Right. I think then what we're going to have to do is just run time on very quickly. Just move time on super quickly. Because right now... We can't do too much else. We need to wait a long time to get 200 million taxes and how long? Four more days until some more newcomers arrive. So for the moment, 
We'll just sit back and watch things going on. There you go. At least the weather's sort of changed a bit. It's brightened up a bit. Wonderful. Umbrellas away. And there we go. Two more people would like to join. Absolutely. Everyone is welcome here in Geekvel. Unless you want to kind of come and stab us with big pointy sticks or whatever, then you're not quite so welcome. But yes, absolutely welcome aboard two new people. And we've reached the milestone of becoming a Hamlet. Goodness gracious. We already managed to find enough fablings brave enough to trust us with a livelihood to call ourselves a Hamlet. Going forward, your family will expect recurring payments of five coin to the family fund. Our family? What, you mean Princess Betty's family? Oh, okay, I've got to pay them a bit of money. Okay, you know. All right, so we received some money, which is quite nice. And now we can build an inn, a stone camp, a coal maker, a granary, a forester. Okay, so many exciting new things. And of course, we have some new people on board as well. Two unemployed people right now. Okay, so claim that money from that. Thank you. And I think over here... Let's get this in nice and early so we don't suddenly run out of trees and therefore run out of a steady supply of wood. Let's get this in. Let's get this attachment in. I remember this from last time. The Forester. Let's kind of bolt one of those onto the side of our building here. So boop that on there like that and then run time on nice and quick to get that. I don't know. That is actually one of our goals down here. Get a Forester set up. So they can do that. They very quickly put that together. We now have a Forester bit set up. Do we have to assign a forester to that particular bit? I don't think we do. I think now maybe our lumber camp worker, so Agnes, will spend her time chopping down trees and then replanting new ones. Okay, that's quite good. Right, okay, happy with that. And that's a nice quick thing to get done. And then we've got to build a stone camp and build a stockpile. Okay, I think maybe a stockpile would be quite useful. So resources, stockpile is just there. Okay. Ah, I remembered this. Yes, this is another thing which you build and then you zone an area kind of around it to store the stuff. So if we put that, I mean, yeah, another row going that way would not go amiss, would it? So if we put that, say, there on our crossroads and then we can say, hang on a minute. Yeah, we can put, oh, it goes around it like that. Oh, it's only got three bits. Okay, no, that's fine. That's absolutely fine. So build that, please. Get the little stockpile set up. That's going to be useful. Some buildings have dynamic storage. Oh, you can tell them what to store and what not to store. No, that's fine. That's fine. Absolutely. Keep, just keep everything in there for the minute. We haven't got that much stuff as it is. But look at that. We're going to have food soon. So possibly, hang on a second, a granary would be useful. It does require upkeep. So we are going to have to pay a little bit to maintain it. And it needs a worker to work in it. But I think that's got to be key, hasn't it? So if we say... Oh, look, we could hang on a second. Hang on. Could we either put it opposite the farm, which would make sense? Or do we sort of put it there and then have one bit of row going in and then have a decorative next to it? I quite like that idea because I do like a decorative. Let's put that there. Then we get a road sort of coming up like to there. We'll have a little bit of road. Hang on a minute. More road. Road going in like that just there and then we can have a decorative thing we could have a little shrub yay there we go okay good so it's all looking good we do also need to get a stone camp in um that's going to go over there some birds need to connect to a resource to function connect the stone camp to a small stone deposit that is over here so it's going to be connected to it hang on hang on how does that work in oh like that right i see so if we put that there and then that also needs to be connected to a road i'm not quite sure where the where does the road need to connect to i can't quite see the blue marker thing do you know what we'll just put it across like that for now hang on is there a gap there um oh, we haven't got any money to even build a bit of road okay <laughs> i might possibly have bankrupt our nation by you know building decoratives but it's fine they look good right so run time on payday would be useful the stockpile's done so we can now take things out of our little wagon and put them into proper storage that's quite nice but we could do with just a tiny bit of coin so we can complete that bit of road just there because it looks like yes i've blown the entire budget on building trees and outhouses and various other bits and bobs so yeah if we could just you know pay up a little bit next payment in three days Good grief. Newcomers in two days. Okay, more people means more money, which is very handy. Have we got housing for them? Yes. We can house two more people, and then we're going to need some more homes. 
Okay, right. This is all fine. So uh, yeah, if we could get either some money coming in or some people, it's going to happen at the same time, I think. It's going to be very helpful. Right, welcome two more people. And we've been paid as well. Right, so complete that weird little road bit that went a bit wibbly. And then we need another house because currently people can't move in and that's not very good at all. So we'll build, yeah, opposite the well. That's got to be a good place, doesn't it? That's going to be very convenient. So like that. And we'll have one foody thing. So a chicken coop like that. And we'll have one nice thing. Maybe another dog house. And we'll put that just there. Wonderful. Right, build. Okay, we can't build that because I haven't got enough money. <laughs> but we can leave it blueprinted until we do have enough money. Also, when we do actually get that uh, that stone camp put together, we will complete that goal and we'll get given some money. So, um, yeah, okay, no rush, no pressure at all, Matilda. But we could do with that being completed very soon because we're a little bit short of cash. Oh, she's all over it. Matilda is absolutely all over it, whacking that with a hammer because that's how you build things these days. And there we go, wonderful. Right, we'll claim that money, thank you. Hang on a second, hang on. Uh, it looks like some newcomers will arrive soon, but there's no housing available. Okay, so what have we got? Seven days. That's plenty of time. Uh, yeah, build that, please. We're down to all of one money, <laughs> which isn't very good at all. Uh, we do have an overview menu. Oh, here we go. Hang on. Hang on. We've got to follow the instructions to complete this thing down here. Select a fabling using the overview menu. Um, okay, uh, Matilda, you're unemployed. I, I, can I select you? Locate. How do I select you? I want to select you. Select. There we go. With the select button. That'll make sense. Assign a fabling to a workplace using the overview menu. Okay, so could we... Workplaces. Could we assign somebody to that? So hang on. Who was that? Mabel is sold. So Mabel, go and work in the granary, please. Right, we'll claim that money because we need a bit of cash. Thank you very much. And now we need to purchase a new territory. Okay, so it's telling us to buy a new plot of land. Um, Hang on. Hang on. Who else doesn't do it? The stockpile doesn't have anybody working there, so Roger can work there. And then the stone camp hasn't got anybody there, so uh, Margaret, you can work there. Okay, so now we've got people working in all of our buildings. We should be generating food and wood and stone and everything else. Right, we could do with just maybe running time on a little bit. How long until people arrive? We've got another four days, but then after that... We're probably going to want another house set up as well. So hang on a minute, game. Hang on a second. I know you want us to go and buy a territory, but I think we need to get another house kind of at least blueprinted. So pop another house just there and we'll have... Oh, I don't know. What should we have? Another apple tree. Put that at the back. And then they can have... They can have a washing line. We'll put a washing line just there, look. Very good. So, uh, yeah, we can't... Hang on. Hang on. When do we get paid? Three days' time. Okay, so we can't quite complete that now, but it can remain in blueprint mode until we have the funds. Right, let's go and do what the game is telling us to do down here. Purchase a new territory. Maybe it'll give us some free money. I don't know. No, it's going to cost a hundred money to expand into one of these areas. Um, there's a pig herd over there. Got iron deposits over there and sheep and fish. We've got fish, ruins, a lot of stone over there and some trees. That one there's a bit boring. That is just trees. Which one takes us closer to to uh, Bob? Bob the tree, whatever he was called. Where is Bob? There's Bob there. I mean, that tile is very good. Plenty of trees, some fish, some ruins, and a large stone deposit. That's not a bad thing at all. Um, the only thing is, yeah, we haven't got 100 money to uh, buy anything quite yet. So, okay, right, here we go. Back to running time on very quickly indeed. Let's hope, ah, here we go. We'll get paid in one day's time, which is going to be quite nice. So we'll use that money... Okay, welcome two new people and build this, please. So get that built. I think, yeah, we're on to, yeah, 15 housing maximum and we have 14 people. So we're constantly fighting against these sort of, you know, the people coming in and joining us, which is what we want. We want more people to come and join us because it's lovely and wonderful. And Cupboard Vale is welcome to all, uh, apart from the people with the pointy sticks. But, um, yeah, we kind of have to keep up you know, keep building the houses and such like to make sure that we can provide housing for people. And uh, we've nearly completed that. So we get 30 free money from that. And then we might just possibly have to sit and wait for a long time. We might just have to wait for the money to come in and then we can buy a new territory because that's really expensive. But there we go. A new homestead goes in and we can now house 18 people. So that's two more sort of uh, people coming. Oh, hang on. There's another 30 up to 77. 
So I think next time we should be okay. So 30, hang on, 77 plus 32. Are oh, we going to be one short on our next payday? <laughs> That's a bit of a nuisance, isn't it? Never mind. Um, okay, right. Let's just sit back and we shall watch everyone go about their business. Farmers are out here doing the farming, which is wonderful. How's the food looking? There's quite a lot of vegetables in the lovely farm, uh, the granary, sorry, over there, which is good. And we've moved all of the things from our little storage wagon over into the proper stockpile over here. And look at that. There's big kind of, you know, boxes of things. They've covered up the ones on the top to keep it dry, protected from the elements. Well done. Okay, things are looking good. So now, yes, we need to wait. Oh, I was going to say until newcomers come in. But there we go. So two more people coming in. Welcome new people. Here's your house. So we've got, yeah, John has gone over there and somebody else filled in another gap in one of the houses. Oh, hang on. 109 money because we have some more people. So now I think we can go to here and we can click on this and buy that territory there for 100 money. We get 50 back, so it's not all bad. So yes, please, we'll do that. Can we claim 50 back? Thank you very much. <laughs> That's very good. Okay, so coal and a coal maker, build an inn, assign an innkeeper. Okie dokes. And maybe we put the inn just here because it's going to be next to quite a lot of houses. That's going to be quite good. But maybe 15 coal in a coal maker might be quite a good thing because it's going to get cold soon. It's going to get wintry and we don't want people to you know, die of cold a bit because that will be bad. So hang on a minute. Let's find ourselves a coal maker. Minus five desirability to the area. OK, so this area around here is going to be very unpopular indeed. How about we tuck it? I mean, we could put it over here. We could put it all the way over here. Maybe this side can be kind of industrial. So if we just tuck that all the way over there, out of the way, in the middle of nowhere, um, we might not be able to build a road up to it just yet, I'm afraid. So you might have a little bit of a walk to get there. But hopefully we can get that sorted. And then we can get that done. Make 15 coal. We've got plenty of people to actually go and work in that place. Hang on to make things quicker can we put another laborer back in just so we can get twice the amount of people you know building things to speed things up a bit that'd be quite good and then an inn where would the inn be amenities yeah there we go so that costs a bit to upkeep but it does make things very desirable um but i can't i oh know because i've got the money we haven't got the money to build one of course we haven't we've never got the money can we build that out like that and can we build that to there Okay, right. We've got a road connected to the um, the coal maker thing. So that's quite good. And now we haven't got very much money again. Okay, never mind. Right, let's get this coal maker set up and see if we can just try and get some coal ready to prepare for winter. Although, already, chappy, whoever that is, I don't quite know who you are, but who are you? Hang on a second. Who? Hang on, pause. William Merrick is over here. Well, I mean, he's going to say he's working. He's completed it now. And we shall have one person working in there. Tom Merrick. Okay, again, possibly related. I do not know, but there we go. So now we've got somebody over there who's able to produce some coal, which is very good. So now I think all we have to do is give it a little time and we'll be able to build an inn and then assign an innkeeper and we'll complete another objective down here. Okay, two more people to welcome in. Hello, everybody. We're now, oh, I was going to say we're only one away from our housing cap, but no, now we're getting into the exciting fancy stuff. A new population milestone has been reached. Well done. Thank you so much. We can now call ourselves a small village. Going forward, your family will expect recurring payments of 10 coin to the family fund. Oh, you pesky family members. Okay, so, oh, nobility. Nobility can be used as a currency for special actions and items. It also influences some interactions with other rulers. Okay. Okay, this is exciting. We're getting to the point where we can have a chat with the other rulers. We got some money. That's very nice. Messengers Guild. That is what we want to get in. So we can send messages to other realms to go and greet their rulers. We can go and say hello to people. Sawmill. That makes great big kind of planks of wood. And we can grow wheat. Okay. So do we get another farm specifically set up to grow wheat? Although what can we do with the wheat? Because I don't think we've got a bakery. Have we got a bakery? Can we use anything? Can we do anything with the wheat? Uh, we need a windmill. But to get that, we'd have to become a village. Okay, at the minute we're a small village. Oh, so 30 people. So what's that? 12 more people means that we become a proper village. Oh, crikey. Okay, that's a little way off. Maybe we don't get the wheat field in quite yet. I mean, a sawmill would be okay. That would be okay. How are we doing down here at making coal? 
I'm a little bit concerned that we're not making any coal at all. We've got... Oh, because they're stocking up on wood. They're stocking up on wood in there. Okay. Um, can we get another person in the lumber camp? That would be helpful. How many other people have we got? Two other unemployed people. And we've got a big pile of money. So possibly now we build an inn and we assign an innkeeper. That's got to be quite good. So let's maybe... Okay, yep, this is a positive big green zone of joy. Uh, let's get that over here. So if we put that there, look, that actually works out quite well. If we put that... Hang on, if we rotate it round, even... No, hang on. No, maybe not that way. Put it there. That's quite good. So it's near the public loo. So if you're in the, in the inn and you need to take a quick break, you can nip across the road and go to the loo. That's very good. Okay, right, so the inn is now going to get constructed. Then we need to assign innkeeper, which means we will have, what, one person left? The only thing is, we also do need some more housing. We need another house, because we're currently out of housing. Um, okay, we could, potentially, can we build some housing down here? They won't have very big gardens, that's the only thing, because there's a road going that way. But we could get some more housing in. Unless, hang on, hang on, we can have the houses not like that. Why can't, hang on, why can't we have the housing like that? Um, that's a bit strange. I oh, know, like that is fine. Oh, okay. So I don't know if they're near enough the well, but they're near enough the inn to get the benefit from it, I think. So, um, okay, I'll put another house down here. Although we potentially could have put one just there. Because I don't think we're going to kind of a road going out that way around the edge of the house. Okay, hang on a minute, hang on. Destroy that. We don't want that. We want it to go over here, please. Next to the pub. Deary me. Not exactly desirable. But there we go. Never mind. Bit rowdy. And we'll have a dog house. And we'll have a greenhouse. A couple of extra houses at the end there. Build that, please. Right. Wonderful. So get time ticking on. Got an interbuild. And then a house as well. If you could get the house done within the next seven days, that would be grand. Can we prioritise that possibly? Locate, destroy. Oh yeah, there you go. Prioritise. Yeah, get that built first, please. Right, there we go. Homestead done with the greenhouse and the doghouse. And it looks like they're... Are they working on the inn? Yeah, okay. It was half done. I think maybe they just went away and had a break. I think all the resorts are in. And there we go. Yes, we have a lovely inn. You can tell it's the inn because there's a lovely, lovely picture of some foamy beer across the top there. Right, welcome to new people. You're lucky there's a place for you to live because we are pushing that a little bit. Um, oh, hang on. Event pesky fairies need your attention. Okie doke. Right, so we've got an inn. We need somebody to work in the inn. Who is the innkeeper? William Martinez. Okay, wonderful. So now people in that area, which is all of our people, are going to be a little bit happier because they can pop to the inn and have a lovely drink or whatever. Right, we'll claim that. And we've got small village. So we'll claim that. The money is coming in. We're going to get that done soon enough because the coal maker will just make coal. So the next one is to produce planks, build a messenger's guild, and assign a messenger. But we do have an event to deal with first. Pesky fairies. Princess Betty. Hello there. Farmers have reported issues with swarms of red-winged fairies spreading in their crops. They worry that if we don't address the issue, we risk losing some valuable food resources. Okay, so don't worry. I'll send some help. We pay 75 money to hire some exterminators to deal with the troublesome red-winged fairies. Um, okay, we ignore the problem, but each crop has a 25% chance that it might die. That's the last thing we need before winter comes around. Or let me think about it. Nothing happens right now, but you know, we could let it time out and then the fairies eat all the stuff. I think we have to put our hand in our pocket and pay the money out. I think we have to go for that because we can't afford to lose all that food. The last thing we want is people starving to death over winter because we let fairies eat the pumpkins. <laughs> That'd be a sad way to go. So um, don't worry, I'll send some help. Please go and sort out the fairies. Can we see where they are? Can we actually see any fairies down here? Or is the game just giving us a random event, but you know, it doesn't animate it as such? I don't think they're actually in the game right now. That'd be quite fun, but never mind. There we go. So... We did make up quite a bit of money from our objectives, and then we spent it on getting rid of some fairies. Never mind. Joe, it comes in and it goes out. Okay, next up is getting some planks made so we can build a messenger's guild. So, okie doke, hang on, let's get a plankery in place. And again, we'll put it down here because this is going to be the kind of the industrial noisy part of town. So we'll pop that down there like that, please. And can we just get a little tiny bit of road going around the front? That'd be quite good. So if we could get that done... That'd be marvellous. 
And then possibly how many extra people? Hang on. Newcomers arriving in two days. We've only got housing for one person. Um, okay. Oh, hang on. We could put something here, look. And then eventually if we do buy this area here, we can have a road going across the front. Like a lovely kind of your know, coastal road type thing. Um, okay, hang on a minute. Let's get another house in. Oh dear, this could be bad. And we'll put, um, I don't know, a chicken coop. Because the chickens are adorable like that. And we'll have maybe another outhouse. We'll sort of pop that just there. There we go. So build that, please. And prioritise that. We need that done pretty immediately, if I'm being completely honest. So we're going to get another two people moving in. But there's only enough housing for one. Bother rations. Never mind. Hopefully they can get it done. Okay, no, we can't welcome all the people. We didn't get the house done in time. So let's welcome one out of two, shall we? We can't welcome all interested visitors because we haven't got a place for them to live, which is a bit of a shame, but there we go. Oh, hang on. Hang on. This is exciting as well. Secret Santa needs your attention. Expires in two days. Princess Betty, Secret Santa, what a childish game. It is below me on my stature. Unfortunately for you, I wasn't given any instructions, so enjoy this. You deserve it. Your Secret Santa. Um, yeah, okay. 30 coal. We'll absolutely take the 30 coal, and it's going to appear over here somewhere. Uh, we'll just put it there. Just put it there for now. So there we go. Got some lovely coal. Thank you, Secret Santa. Can we get rid of that now? Do they demolish that? I don't want that to hang around because that's kind of in the way. Oh, hang on. We've got some coal. Thank you very much. Right. So now it's all over to the plankery. We need that set up so we can get some planks made. Then we can build a messenger's guild. Then we can assign a messenger. And then we can go and have a chat with our royal neighbours around the place, which is very exciting because that's kind of where we left it last time. And we didn't get to do that properly. I think we kind of said hello a bit and that was it. So if we could get to that point and then go and have a chat with our neighbours, that'd be very exciting. But yes, first up, let's get some planks made in the plankery. Hang on a second, there's another event. Another Secret Santa event. Okay, happy holidays. Secret Santa is one of my favourite traditions and this always cheers me up in the dark of winter. I always advise that this is not a fun gift, but I love it. I hope you do too, your Secret Santa. I mean, we did get given coal as one of our gifts, which isn't great, but um, okay. 75 vegetables. Okay, it's a weird Secret Santa gift, but you know what? I'm not going to turn down some lovely vegetables. There we go. Can somebody take them and put them over into the granary? Is there room in the granary? Oh, welcome to more people. Hello, new people. Is there room in the granary? How big can that, how much can it store? 400. At the moment, there's 173 in there. Well, there's 100, hang on. 170, there's 153 vegetables. 173, unless it counts these ones coming in as part of their total. Um, hang on, where's... It says 173 vegetables. We're not storing anything else. Yeah, the total is 193. Okay, don't fully get that, but never mind. It's okay. Right, move time on pretty quickly. So they can grab all that lovely food. That will help. I think we're okay for food, but having more food is always a very handy thing. Right, okay, the sawmill is done. Can we please have a lovely person working there? Tom Cosimo. Yes, absolutely. He's very good at chopping bits of wood and turning them into lovely planks over in the plankery. So now, with that done, we should be able to then produce 10 planks and then we can build a messenger's guild. The only thing is, where do we want that to go? Where should we put our messenger's guild? Get time moving on nice and quick. Let's get this done speedily. Um, how many people have we got left? Three unemployed people. What I'm thinking is, could we... Where's the um, the stockpile thing? Where's that? Um, there. Could we get a stockpile over there, like that? That might, Hang on, hang on. No, destroy that. Not there. Put a stockpile there and have one, two and three. And they can store their things down here without having to drag them all the way over there. Because that's a little bit of a distance. So build that for 55 money. And then, oh, hang on. New decoratives unlocked. Oh, no. Oh, no. What are we going to see? <laughs> what have we got? A circular table. A table made of circles. Okay, we have to have one of those. And I think we put that next to the pub because that makes perfect sense. We can have a little sort of beer garden out the back. And if you do it at the right angle, it's a little bit like Mickey Mouse. Right, okay. So put that there. Um, I mean, is that the wisest use of our money? Probably not, but never mind. We've done it now. And then can we please get in the Messenger Guild? No, we can't because it costs 100 and we just spent money on some tables. Okay, never mind. <laughs> we'll wait until the next payday, which is only in two days time. 
That's going to be fine. And then we'll build a messenger's guild, unless we spend some more money on some of the you know, pointless fripperies around the place. But no, we'll be fine. We'll hold back on spending money until we've got a messenger's guild up and running. Right, there we go. We've now got enough money to build a messenger's guild. Oh, hello, new people and more money coming in as well. We'll welcome the one person that we can. We can't welcome everybody because we haven't got enough housing. We'll sort that out in a second. Let's get the messenger guild in first. And I think... Let's put it here, look, on that kind of crossroads in the middle of the town. That seems like a perfect place for the messenger guild to go. So we'll put that just there, look. I quite like that. So that's the only thing being put together, I think. We do need planks. So it's going to take a while for us to get some planks out to that, because, of course, we have to build them over in the plankery, which is only operated by one person. So poor Tom there has got a very big, important job of trying to get all these planks sorted so we can go and communicate with the outside world. But okay, that's fine. He'll get there. He's good as, uh, he's good as Tom. Can we get another person working over in the lumber camp? That would be quite handy. So three unemployed people. It's going to come down to two when we employ somebody over in the, over in the thing, over in the uh, messenger guild. Can we get another farmer for now? Just pop somebody else in the farmer thing. And then have we got... Oh, no, hang on. That stockpile isn't doing anything. Um, Hugh. Hugh Nielsen can work in the stockpile down there, so they can keep that running, so they can get that stocked up. Got some more money coming in, 120 money, even though we just spent a load on building that, that's not too bad at all. And we do need some more housing. We need to get some more housing in place. How far did that reach? It does reach over here, so maybe we get some housing over there. Does the well reach over there? Yes, it does. Okay, the obvious thing then is to get housing set up over here. So put a house like that, and then build the thing like that. Yeah, like that. Perfect. And then in here, what have they got there? They've got a loo and a tree. So how about a dog kennel like that? And then they can have, and I've already got the apple tree. How about bees? More bees. Everyone loves bees. We'll put a beehive in. There we go. So please build another house so more people can come in. And possibly, I think maybe another house would be useful as well. So I think we'll get that like that. And then you can have... They've got a tree there as well, actually. Hang on a second. We shall have some vegetables. Let's grow some lovely, healthy veg. And then we'll have a loo. A lovely outhouse right there. Splendid. Okay, get that done. We've got to dismiss visitors. I'm so sorry, people. Come back in a bit. They'll leave in three days. We might possibly be able to get one of these done. Uh, prioritise that. Only needs... Four bits of wood coming in, although we haven't got that much wood right now because we're sending it all to be turned into planks. Um, are they bringing it in? Okay, now we might be able to house some people. This is very good. Hang on a minute. Wait there. You don't need to leave. Hang around for a bit. Look, we're putting the roof tiles on. Well, they've got to finish the things in the garden, I think. So hang on, finish that. And I think, did they just go? Oh, botherations. I think we just finished the house and they left. That's a bit of a nuisance. Never mind. At least now we're going to have two houses up and running. And now the only thing we're waiting for in the Messengers Guild are five planks. So no pressure over here, uh, Tom. And no pressure over here, people in the lumber camp. So Agnes, Mabel and Richard. But we're all waiting for you to chop down trees and then turn them into planks so we can get a messenger ready to go out there and say hello to the world. Okay, we can welcome two more people. Hello, two new people. So how many unemployed people have we got now? Two. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, because one of them would have become head of house over here. And then we had one other one. Anyway, hang on. Did they just have a chat? I think they might have just had a little chat there. So William Isolder and Joan Ward just had a pleasant little chat there out in the garden. That's quite nice. That's good. You know, a nice friendly little sort of neighbourhood thing to do. Very lovely. We're still waiting for planks. We are still waiting for planks to get over there. Have we got any planks down here? I think down here. What have we got? Coal. Um, that one is stone not quite sure what that one is that's coal oh okay have we stalled over here where's where is tom is that you tom um no where's where's tom these days tom where about so can we locate you you're uh, is that you ah right i see you're going home which does make sense because you have to go home occasionally um i'm happy they opened an inn close to my home <laughs> It couldn't be too much closer. It could only be closer if you lived in that house there, to be honest. Then you can just stagger out the door from between the, you know, the inn and your home, which is very good. Um, okay, right. He's going back over there then because we do need to get these things sorted. And we've got another homestead so we can house another four people. And if we do, 
that means we will become a village, which is going to be very good because that's our next kind of uh, population settlement increase thing with Bob. Right, can we get this done? Four planks now. Tom, it's over to you. Can you please get on with doing plank work in the plankery? Always doing a grand job is Tom. Look at that. He's flying around the place, chopping up bits of wood. He's making planks. I think we should have enough. I think he just made the right amount of planks. I think, yeah, there's two required. But I think some are probably coming in. Is that one coming in? No, there must be some planks over here. I'm fairly certain he just made more than two more planks. So unless they are currently en route right now... Oh, hang on. Welcome to new people. Hello. Um, yep, yeah, one plank came in. And now we need just one more. Come on, just bring one more plank in. There we go. Yes. And then we've got whoever you are dashing about the place, teleporting around, building the thing. This is very good. You've got somebody else just kind of in the way there. <laughs> <laughs> William Isolde, just, you know, getting in the way. That's fine, William Isolde. Okay, here we go. Get the Messenger Guild done. Then we can go and have a chat with the rest of the world. And this is where it gets all jolly exciting. So here we go. Can we please have a new person over here? So Joan Ward is going to be our first messenger. Collect some money. That's very welcome indeed. And um, when are the next people coming in? Six days time. Okay, that's fine. No active missions. Okay, so send out a messenger to another realm using the newly unlocked world map. Once the messenger has arrived, greet the ruler of the newly discovered realm. Okay, here we go. Here is the world map. So, welcome to Cup of Tea World. The world map is used to interact with other rulers, complete missions, and more. Click any Occupy Realm to get started. Okay, so eight are going to be made in total during early access. Okay, so I think right now, though, we've only got that one. Oh no, there's two. There's Janin over there, which we did look at at the very start. And we've got Ehodran over there, kind of out on its own, kind of you know, not attached to this main body of land. Let's go to the quicker one. So is it, does it make any difference? No, it makes no difference. Okay, we'll just go to the nearer one then. Send a messenger to Janin. 50 money, we can afford that. And yeah, away you go. Right, so we're sending our delegation away. Chance of success, 100%. That's quite good. Exit the map. And now we just wait. We just wait seven days to see what happens with that delegation. So hopefully the people of Janin will be happy to see us and we can get on with them really well and to be all lovely and they can come around for a cup of tea and a biscuit and we'll have a lovely chat by the fire. I think as well in one day's time we're going to get some new arrivals which will push us up to village status and there we go. A new population milestone has been reached. Well done again. Thank you so much. We can now call ourselves a village. Going forward, your family will expect recurring payments of 20 coin to the family fund. Okay, so we've got 100 money. That's quite nice. We can now have windmills, stone quarries. Stone is gathered from the attached stone deposit. Okay, are they the big things? Hero quarters. Headquarters for all hero operations. Spawns the kingdom's first hero when first placed. Oh, that's very exciting. Um, okay, these are all good things. So continue that. The big thing now, though, is this mission over here. I'd like to see what happens with this. I'd like to go and chat to another ruler. I want to do even just the barest hint of a romantic thing with one of the other rulers because we didn't get to do that in the demo. And I'd like to just kind of see a little bit of how that works if we can. So here we go. Move Tom on nice and quick. Only one day remaining, actually. That should come around pretty quick. The days do go by quite fast here. And um, we are going to struggle to get any more people in in eight days time. Well, there you go. Chapter two, meet cute. Okay, hang on a second. So we've discovered Janin. Oh, Giovanni the Merchant Prince. Hello, Giovanni. Hello, neighbor. I'm here to make a deal. I'll draft up some paperwork. Good hat, Giovanni. Very nice. A pleasure to meet you. Please accept this gift as a token of my friendship. So we could give him some money and he'll be very happy about that. Given he's a merchant, that would make sense. Well met. I look forward to getting to know you and learning more about your kingdom. Nothing bad happens, but we don't get a big positive effect. Do you know what? We're going to give him some money. We've got quite a big pile of it. There you go. Have some cash. Each realm has a ruler with their own personality, missions and rewards. To learn more about the ruler, click the information I button. Where is that? You have a relationship with each ruler that is affected by your interactions. Some interactions require a specific relationship level. For example, to start courting, you first need to be friends. Okay, right. Okay, so we might not get around to that today, but okay, we'll try and give that a go at some point. So is that where we do that? Oh, there's the eye. Okay, so what are you like? Giovanni, the merchant prince. Rich in love is his kind of power ability thing. All tax levels are increased by one coin without affecting happiness. 
Oh, so he does make quite a bit of cash from the taxes. Okay, that's quite good. Descended from a long and regal line of merchant princes, Giovanni is as shrewd and calculating as his forebears. Bold, lucky, and often reckless, this handsome prince seeks to develop the land for profit. Okay, if we were to court him, which we're not interested in because we're a princess looking for a princess, but if we did court him, we could get a dice table and a crown. Oh, I like a nice crown. Um, okay, right, that's fine. So we can't do too much right now. Send another messenger. Um, okay, right, so we've had a chat with you. So now can we go out over here? Send a messenger to Ehodran over there for 100 money again, that's fine. We'll see who's over there then. So yeah, send in the messenger out in that direction and we'll see who we can find. Oh, hang on, claim the money. Thank you very much. So what do we have next? A happy surprise. Send a message with a gift to another ruler. Deliver the gift successfully. Okay, we can possibly do that. We have got to wait another seven days for our messenger to get to Ehodran across the sea there, but that's okay. However, in one day, we are going to have to turn down some newcomers because we simply don't have anywhere for them to go. We could potentially... No, that's not big enough. That plot there isn't big enough. We might have to build a new housing bit over here somewhere. Although, is that new quarry thing we unlocked noisy? Stone quarry... Oh, it's very miserable. It's very, very noisy. People do not like that at all. Okay, I'm really sorry, visitors. You're going to have to come back later. Just hang on a second. Maybe then we build over here. Let's maybe sort of replicate that. Is that thing undesirable? The lumber camp is not undesirable. Okay, that's fine. So possibly we just kind of mimic what we've got over there, but on this side, possibly. That might work. So let's get another house in at least. So we'll get a house uh, like that, and then just draw the thing around the edge. And in here, you can have a lovely tree, and then you can have... I don't know, washing line. Have a washing line just there. Yeah, that looks good. So build one house there, and then we'll have one opposite. So one like that, and then draw the thing on, and you can have... What did you guys have? They had a tree. Okay, chickens. You can have some chickens, and you can also have um, an outhouse. There you go. We'll pop that just there in front of the chicken coop. Wonderful. So that can house another, what, six people? That's pretty good. So that'll be up to 36. If we build another house, that means that we could then house up to 42. Hang on, is 36 plus 6? 42. Yeah, it is. Yay, massive pain. So get another house in, and that means we've got enough housing capacity to get up to a big village, which is quite exciting. Okay, do you know what? We're going to do that now. We're going to do that. Have that like that. We'll have a dog kennel. That's quite fun. And we'll have some bees, because bees are brilliant. There we go. Right, so that should sort our housing out for a good long time if they get that done soon enough. We are lacking a bit of wood. We are lacking wood. I imagine we're turning a lot of it into planks, but that's okay. That's fine. We, we'll slowly work our way through. It's all going to be good. Plenty of food. That's wonderful. How long till the next mission? Three days. Okay, right. So let's run time on. Oh, hang on. Nope, let's not run time on. A festival. Okay, Princess Betty, it's about time we did some celebration. When things are hard, a festival can get everyone back on track. When things are good, a festival is even more fun. What do you have to lose? A load of money, possibly. Let's party. Okay, so... Oh, look at that. That's very good. Increases happiness of all fablings by 10 for 30 days. Costs 100 money, but I think it might be worth doing. Do you know what? Yeah, let's have a big festival. There we go. Look, we've got some, some party thing of bobs happening. Buffs are global effects that affect your entire kingdom in a positive way. They're displayed at the top of the screen underneath the kingdom summary panel. Okay, so a little festival is on the way. 30 days left. Oh, that's wonderful. Everyone's having a lovely party and they're all happy and smiley. Excellent stuff. And I think our messenger has arrived at whatever it was called. Oh, it's you down here. Okay, you're the one we'd like to have a lovely chat to. Hello, Agnes. Welcome to my bountiful kingdom. I trust that your intentions are honourable. Absolutely. As always, I love your kind of headgear. It's lovely. It's like a nice sort of flowery hat type thing. Um, okay, we're going to give her 30 vegetables because she does love that. She loves vegetables. She's all about kind of flowers and plants and growth and stuff. The harvest princess. So yeah, there you go. Give you some vegetables. So you like us a little bit more than you know, we would do if you hadn't to, if we hadn't given you vegetables. Um, okay, so let's have a little look then. Don't know what that was flying by, but okay, that was a bit weird. For Agnes, the harvest princess, bountiful charm. All crop yields are doubled. That's really good. 
That is very good. So if we caught her, that means that we get so much food. That's wonderful. Faebodum's enchanting May Queen and the Princess of the Harvest herself focused on the bounty of the land and the happiness of her people. Agnes values healthy fields and flowers. I like the sound of that. So if we do court her, we might get a flower farm, some tulips and a laurel wreath like the one she's got on her head. I want one of those. Um, OK, can we send her a gift? Can we send her a present? Um, sending you well wishes. Um, oh, she wants grain. Ah, bother. Okay, that's a bit of a nuisance. She would like 50 grain. That's the gift that we can send her. So, yeah, that's annoying, isn't it? I don't want to send the gift to the other person. Okay, right, hang on. Pause time for a second. Now we know what we need to do. I think we'll finish things up for the moment, but we'll come back to Fabledom. We'll get ourselves a farm set up that grows lovely grain. We'll grow some grain and then we'll send it as a gift to Agnes. And then hopefully we can do some courting after that. But I think, yeah, we're pretty close to getting to that point, which is all going to be very exciting indeed. And then we'll try and get some more housing stuff set up over here. Try and get a well put in on that side, possibly, and get another in and all that kind of stuff. Kind of mimic that set up. But over here, to make sure the people over here are nice and happy and all comfortable with everything they've got. And then we'll just go from there. Then we will go from there. Maybe next time as well, save up enough money, possibly head over into this square here and have a chat with Bob Barkskin. Oh, hang on. I've clicked on Bob and something has happened. This is an encounter and can be interacted with using your hero. Oh, OK. So we have to get a hero down. And we can do that because I think we can build a hero tent now so they can go out and have a chat with Bob Barkskin. Oh, there's, there's much to do. There are many things to do. So we'll come back next time and see how we get on. But I think we've made a very, very comfortable start. Things are looking good. So we'll come back next time and see what happens. Hopefully you have enjoyed this. If you have, please do leave a like. That would be most marvellous indeed. And also, if you're not already, then please do subscribe to keep up to date with how we get on here next time out in Fabledom. But for now, thank you very much for joining me in the Geek Cupboard, and I will see you next time. For as we all know, with K comes spiritual enlightenment and also happiness. That smell is totally not coming from any dark elder gods. Nope, not even a little bit. Okay, so a little picture of us on the wall, just to remind everybody who's in charge around here. Oh, and this person here is saying, Penge, you're my friend. Tom, you're my friend too. Nobody likes a soggy bottom.